The Rage Xenomorphs are a modified and weaponized species or variant of the xenomorph we know all too well, which was used by a dissident group of humans called the Rage. To understand more of this strange and weaponized form of xenomorph, we must first understand who the Rage are and their backstory. The Rage, also known or originally known as the Founders, were a dissident group of humans that left the human sphere in search of a better life, free from the restraint of human society. They were a group of intellectual humans whose advanced scientific experiments, which included genetic sampling, quantum quantification, multiverse balancing, and quark replacement therapy, drew scorn from the rest of humanity, and thus paved the way for them leaving and starting anew. Although originally titled the Founders, they would gain new leadership under Beatrix Maloney. This would then steer them away from scientific achievements and philosophical enlightenment. The group's aims would eventually then turn to revenge, and it would of course lead them to use their scientific prowess to further their aim of revenge, and thus they would become known as the Rage. As previously mentioned, the Rage began as the Founders. They were a group of highly intellectual humans. They had vast scientific knowledge and advancements beyond the years. Unfortunately, this would lead them to become shunned by humanity. Apparently facing persecution, the founders decided to exile themselves from known space at the turn of the 25th century. They decided to establish their own utopia seek discovery and a better life far away from the influence of the rest of mankind. They left humanity behind aboard three ships, Hamlet, Othello and Macbeth, ships with the names that undoubtedly better represent their enlightened selves. Each of these ships, the Hamlet, Othello and Macbeth, carried a thousand occupants. Although Hamlet, unfortunately and sadly, was lost on the initial journey from the human sphere, the two remaining vessels and their 2,000 occupants began their long voyage of discovery out into uncharted, unpopulated space, the unknown regions. For some time, the group existed in something approaching utopia. They had sought this and under the guidance of their leader, Wordsworth, it was almost achieved. They discovered brave new wonders. There were new members born aboard Othello and Macbeth, and this utopia grew. The original founders, of course, they grew old and they would die. Wordsworth himself would be nearing the end of his life, despite the tremendous advancements in science the founders had achieved. It would be old age itself, and of course mortality, that drove the founders on to their greatest discovery. On a distant planet far, far away, they located a gel-like substance. This gel seemed capable of halting or even reversing the aging process, and it was quickly adapted as a medicine to save the ailing founders. And of course, it would prolong their natural lives far beyond that of a normal human. However, sometime later, the group made much more incredible discoveries aboard an artificial planetoid found to have originally been constructed by the now long dead Drakathi. This artificial planetoid the founders would call Midsummer. And it was here that they uncovered the creatures incredibly advanced biotechnologies, many of which were reverse engineered and adapted by the founders. They also discovered the Fays, strange creatures that were responsible for the construction of Midsummer itself. And even now, they would continue to expand the planetoid, constantly working and constructing new parts of this artificial planet. 
However, deep within Midsummer, the greatest discovery was found. Laying dormant, waiting, the Xenomorph. It was the Xenomorph's discovery that was the linchpin of a coup led by Beatrix Maloney. She would take over from the founders, and Wordsworth insisted it was a sign that they should leave Midsummer for good. Maloney sat in her own dark hatred for humanity. She found the creatures and saw that they would be a vision for the future. Wordsworth obviously did not agree with her vision, so she murdered him in secret. And she would rise as the new leader of the Rage. They would immediately have the Xenomorphs brought on board. They needed to study, research, dissect. They needed all data they could muster on these creatures. They based all of their research on data which was originally stolen from Wayland yutani hundreds of years before. And under Maloney's leadership, the Rage formed abandoning their utopia and fully embracing their namesake. No longer seeking to explore, discover, and further enlightenment, they wanted to return to the human sphere and take revenge on the former persecutors. Under Beatrix Maloney's insistence, the Fays were also brought aboard Othello and Macbeth, which, when they did, they began to automatically repair and upgrade the ships, despite failing to respond to any and all attempts at communication. Simply acting on impulse, a design potentially. Now Beatrix and the Rage prepared the Xenomorphs for years. They were successfully subjugated, controlled, placed under the total restraint of the Rage's android generals. Maloney would begin her war on vengeance. This vengeance war began on the Fiennes colony ships. They were originally sent out long before the founders had even departed on their journey. They were rounded up, captured, their sleeping occupants used as nurseries for the Rage's Xenomorph soldiers. And as Maloney and the Rage began their journey back to the human sphere, she sent out secret transmissions ahead of her advance. This activated sleeper agents within the human citizens, which would carry out devastating terrorist attacks on targets across the human space. Now the Rage Xenomorphs in appearance are actually not all that different. However, the Queen had been heavily modified so that all of her brood, even the facehuggers, were telepathically controlled by the Rage Generals. Now each general would have their name branded into their individual Xenomorph army, and each Xenomorph was forced to self-destruct if mortally wounded, because of course, they were controlled by an intelligence greater than their queen. They would sometimes display more tactics than what is the norm for their species. Now ultimately, does Beatrix Maloney succeed in her rage war? To find that out, you'd have to read or listen to the Rage War trilogy. As a return to older style content, I just wanted to sort of entice you into it and bring you a Xenomorph variant and a little bit of lore from the Xenomorph universe. What did you think? Personally, I find it to be interesting how the Rage managed to succeed where Wayland yutani did not. However, Wayland yutani was instrumental in them succeeding. If they hadn't found the original research data by Wayland yutani I find it incredibly unlikely that they would have got anywhere near the success rate that they actually had, despite their incredible scientific prowess. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. If you're new here, please do hit subscribe. And if you want to stay up to date on all of this and some other bits and bobs, then please do turn your bell notifications on. Thanks so much. Take care.